Another common pattern of probabilities for a discrete variable is called the geometric distribution. And the idea here is that we keep doing an experiment until we get a success. We might roll a dice until we get a six. We might toss a coin until we get the first head. This is sometimes called the king's son problem because Henry VIII kept having children until he got a boy. In fact, he kept having wives until he got his first male child. So you're doing something until you get a success. And what we're interested in is how many times you have to repeat the experiment. What's the average number? And so on. So let's look at the dice example. E.g. roll a dice until um, we get a six. And we're counting the total number of rolls. So let's call that x. How many rolls? Well, you could get it first go. And the chance of that happening would be one sixth. You might need two goes to get the six. And that would happen if you failed on the first go and then got your six on the second go. Now, in order to fail on the first go, there's a chance of that happening is 5 6 and then, so we multiply, so we have 5 6 of a chance that you fail on the first attempt and then 1 6 of a chance that you're successful on the second attempt. Might need three goes. That would be if we failed on the set first and second attempt and then got our success. And the chance of that happening is 5 6 squared, fail and then another fail and then a success, and so on. This is going to go on forever. Potentially, you could take 100 rolls of the dice until you get a six. There is no strict cutoff. Obviously, it becomes extremely unlikely, but in principle, you could go on to a million before you got your first six. It could happen. So let's look at a couple of aspects of this. First of all, is it a true probability distribution. Do the probabilities add up to 1? So let's see what sigma p is. Well it's 1 6 plus 5 6 times 1 6 plus 5 6 squared plus and there's no limit. Now this actually is a geometric series from which you'll have met in your pure maths. That's what's called a geometric distribution. Each term is the previous term multiplied by the constant ratio 5, 6. And the formula for adding up such a geometric series where the ratio term is less than 1, which means that these numbers get smaller and smaller and the total, the infinite total does make sense. The formula is the first term, 1, 6, divided by 1 minus the ratio, 1 minus 5, 6. So that's 1, 6 divided by 1, 6, which of course equals 1. So that's exactly what we want. This is a genuine probability distribution. The probability is total 1. Let's look at the general formula. If the probability of a success is p, then the probability of x uh, attempts, well, what's going to happen? We've got to have fails for the first x minus 1. When x was 3, we had two fails and then the success. So I want a fail, which has got probability of 1 minus p. I want that to happen x minus 1 times, so 5 6 squared when x is 3, and then I want to get a success on my x attempt. So that's the formula for the geometric uh, distribution. We can work out the mean, and I'll just uh, give you the result, and it's quite an intuitive idea. The average value, the mean of x, turns out to equal 
1 over p. So for example, for dice, the mean is 1 over a sixth, which of course is 6. So that's a very intuitively sensible answer. How many throws of a dice do I expect to make to get a particular number? I expect to make 6. Exactly what we um, think should happen. If I was tossing a coin and I was waiting for my first tail, how many tosses do I expect to make before I get the first tail? will be 1 over a half, which is 2. Again, it's very intuitive. Okay, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.